Hello, this is one of the larger of the March 2022 release LEGO City sub-theme space sets based on the real-life NASA Artemis mission concepts, at least. This is the Lunar Research Base, comes with 786 pieces, and I bought it for its suggested retail price in the US of $120. There's a lot of stuff to talk about here, including six minifigures and a bunch of side builds. I'm going to focus first, though, on the main base structure itself. So first, let's just have a look at this from some different angles. And let me get a couple of minifigures so that you have a continuous idea of scale. I was impressed by the number of pieces that were budgeted here to ensure that it would look completed from different angles. Like I thought that this was gonna be fairly open and unfinished, usually it is, but they even put in the, the big ugly rock pieces, corner pieces here, and lots of pieces to fill in all the gaps. Uh, that's, that's not normal and it, it did impress me during the build process. It just makes it feel a little bit more believable since this is intended to be a semi-realistic sort, of, uh, sort of setup, you know, it's not purely fantasy. It's based on real NASA concepts and work that's in progress. What we're looking at here from the highest level is right in the center is a garage. So this is where vehicles would be parked and you know embark and disembark and be worked on. This is habitation and a little bit of of experiment space. This is an experimentation lab space over here. This is an equipment room and then this is just a transfer module to help people to go in and out of something else which I, which I will show you briefly here but it's a completely different set. So let's start over here and get into the details. First of all, looking at the end, you can see here that this is still using the connector system that was introduced with the previous space sub theme that was a little bit less realistic, but I'm glad that they committed to this connector design so you can still connect this module and all of these, well, most of the modules from the new series to the old stuff. Some of the old stuff is still available out there on the market, but most of it has been discontinued for a while now. But I just appreciate that if, you know, a kid has a bunch of, you know, likes space stuff and has a bunch of the, the previous series of stuff. Well, now this will work with those and the, the color schemes are fairly compatible as well. Up here you got the transceiver dish which is able to rotate around and it's on a ball joint. It makes it actually a little bit better than before. This is kind of nostalgic to me though. It's a very older looking thing. Nice chrome gold for the solar panel. It's not the highest level of detail in the graphic design work there but I do like just how shiny that is and of course you can change the angles of these on either side. The classic space inspired logo is used throughout and our main access for huge figures to get in is by just opening up the top and there you can see the microscope, the printed little amoeba and a petri dish piece and it looks like they're trying to do some distillation see if they can get some some uh, some power from uh, I don't know exactly what's going on here but it looks like science stuff is going on it's it's kind of cool I don't think they've done this exact build before the only thing that I personally don't like about this connector system so again just to reinforce, I am very glad that they committed to using this. The only thing I don't like about it is that it's not the most realistic for allowing minifigures to walk through. It works in space for minifigures to float through like this, but when you're down on the ground in, a, in, a, in an environment that has gravity, you kind of want your figures to be able to walk or at least duck and it's just you know, like you have to duck a lot and even at that it's like you got to turn sideways so i wish that that had been made taller in the first place but it wasn't however these are interconnectable still even within just this build here you can move some stuff around a little bit a little bit of of um, adjustment a little bit of customization like taking this off will give you access to more ends and that's that's just good like i always always really appreciate systems of interconnectable sub-assemblies. It just kind of goes with the whole Lego thing. I like this center segment so much and especially the new dome pieces and especially in the trans light blue like this. These work fantastically well and they seal up pretty well along the edges and they're very very easy to use. Most of these parts uh, came with just a handful of other pieces in a, a bag that was separated out. So there wasn't as much scuffing as usual, but there are still some scratches on there. That's something to, to worry about. If you get one of these sets and one of these is unacceptably scratched up, you are not happy with it at all. You think that you've been ripped off a little bit in terms of what you paid versus what you got, be sure to contact customer support. Oftentimes they are willing to help out and send, try to send you replacements. No guarantees those will be perfect, but you know we pay premium prices for 
these premium pieces of plastic. We deserve to get them in good condition. I was pretty lucky with this one, fortunately, but I just love the design of these pieces. They're connected with, so there's a bar at the end, top and bottom, so they can be used in different ways in future builds. As you can see inside of here, this has two beds. So I'm just, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Just pop this up. It's much easier to, to angle it towards you. A uh, bed there that can hold a figure. You can see the little bit of offset, got a bowl, <laughs> you know, just stuff for, you know, people live here, right? For quite some time. Somebody has an action figure as well. Uh, some fresh uh, food has been grown. This is also used as a uh, kind of a communal table in the center. And then stuff is being grown over here. I don't know what that crystal is all about. I'm assuming that's something that, you know, we would discover out there. It's the idea of what, what are you going to find when you go exploring in space? And in this case, particularly on the moon. So they've got the crystal and they've brought it in. I believe that's all that's going on there. Again, the classic space inspired logo on the top, which is very nice to see. Also a little bit of a attachment to classic uh, NASA itself, but this is fantastic. And as you can see, as this is able to pop off, you can just use it somewhere else if you want to. Underneath of all of that is the garage. This is a little bit more difficult to see, but there's space in the back because the big ugly rock pieces are hollow. Got a full set of tools in the silver color. And you know, those are set up pretty well. Other than that, mostly just op open empty space to roll vehicles in there. And it's big enough. This is nice, obviously the, the, the Technic uh, fender piece. I just had, had to, to say that. Otherwise it's like, hey, dang, you forgot that that's a Technic fender piece. I see it, it it's, it's, it's right there. It, it's cool, it works well, it gives it a nice shape. These are prints down here. Good to see these come out. I just like safety striping pieces in general. And as far as what would actually fit in here, you've got this moon buggy. I can show you this right now. So we don't have to do that as a separate thing. This is uh, it's pretty, pretty simple as it's supposed to be. But what I like about this most is that it was designed uh, smart. <laughs> it's got a plow there and the plow comes all the way down to the ground. So many times Lego has done plows and bulldozers and things where the blade doesn't go all the way to the ground. This one goes all the way to the ground. You can easily angle it to the side or right there in the center and you pick it up like that. And I mean, potentially you can even carry something a little bit, use it as a, as a stretcher piece, you know, to, if somebody is injured or something but it's mostly just a single person thing and it just rolls right in there. There's no, there's no door here, obviously. It doesn't get locked up. This is another vehicle that's included in the set. This is based on a real concept for what's called the Viper Rover, an autonomous uh, drone bot that, or, well, it's able to work autonomously or with under remote control. It actually looks like this. It looks so weird to me in person, but this it is based on something that is that is real, that is being worked on presently, that would go around doing mapping and looking for resources that could be mined on the moon. So it's got the little probe under here, which may also have a drill, built, dri drill bit involved in it. The real thing is about golf cart size, they say, and I think that this is appropriately scaled to a mini to a minifigure. It's a little bit smaller, but it just doesn't waste any pieces and kind of gets the, the whole idea across. And there is space to park that in there as well, back in the back, in addition to this, and you still have space to pose minifigures around doing work. So I think all that works out quite well. And again, again, using the same modular system for connecting things together. So I'll just move that off to the side so you can see this more easily. This is built the same the same way as the other module, the, the first one, the lab one, but this is relatively simple. Maybe a little bit disappointing in that sense because there's a single clip on the side to hold on to a minifig accessory. And then these just hold helmets. So when people come in from the outside, these would just be placed on top like that. You know, their, their EVA helmets would just be placed on top. It's a place to store a couple of those. Then over here is a screen. That's a print. That's a new print, I believe, for 2022. And I'm just happy to see it because I like screen prints and things. They're, they're useful. This last segment is weird looking. It is just a gangway. It's just walking space. There's, there's nothing that you do inside other than potentially have something slide down there. Uh, it's kind of narrow once again, not the most useful thing, but the idea here is to show that there is connectivity that occurs between 
the uh, between the the station, the the base, and other vehicles and such. So you actually transfer people in and out. This would be your airlock sort of uh, connection. So this would be a good place to enter from. Also, I will show you with a connection to the Lunar Exploration Set. So this one has a door up here, up high. Open that, open that, and you can see already that these two are going to match up. You can put a couple Technic pins in there if you want to make these connect perfectly. Otherwise, just like line it right up and there you go. You've got your, your docking complete and successful. Now, just to be extra clear, this thing here is its own separate set, not included with the thing that I'm reviewing right now. This, however, is included with the set that I'm reviewing right now, the lunar base, and this is the lander. So this is how people will get to the base, and it's also how they'll go back up to orbit and ultimately be transferred back to Earth when it is time and all. This is pretty nice. It looks a little bit more realistic, a little bit more be believable than the usual typical Lego rocket thing. It's got the legs there. These are supposed to be the, the fold-out dishes, which in real life, I think they, they like they go completely, you know, like an umbrella. They completely close up uh, practically like a, like a flower. Uh, here they're just hard, but you can do a little bit of folding up. I want you to just see what this looks like in its default form. It's a good thing that Lego put the solar <laughs> onto each of these stickers there so that you would know exactly what it is. I think most kids would understand what those are supposed to represent anyway. This has a very simple built-in little, little feature where once it lifts off, fire comes out, flame comes out, the base. It's just a little gravity feed thing that's built in there, but it's nice. You know, just a little extension, a little something, something. The reason that they're able to have this in there though, however, is that all this space is otherwise unused and unusable. So this is all hollow in here, but you can't do anything with it. Also, this whole thing does not have any co uh, connectivity to the other modules. It looks like it might. It looks like you might be able to take it off right here, like take the, the crew compartment off, but you, you can't. That would disassemble the whole thing. Same thing down here. This is not a, a connection point. So what you do with this instead is you can retract the legs up this way. It doesn't really doesn't do all that much though, does it? Uh, you've got the, the ladder here, which gives you a little bit of a suggestion of how many figures would be able to get into there, but not quite enough. You know, you definitely have to use your imagination still a bit. Fold the, the feet out or in, but they don't really fold all the way in. It would be nice if they could flip together better. And then these here to retract them. They're a little bit flimsy, uh, honestly, doing this. You can pull this down a little bit. That's not great. That's not that great. Maybe this is your best bet for that. I don't know. Just doesn't do all that much. But the detail looks nice on display. This one just doesn't have as much play value, I think, as the others, in, in my opinion. Um, you, know, you can't be very rough with it, honestly. The crew compartment section of it is perfectly fine, though. Uh, uses a minimum number of pieces. You know, this is a relatively specialized canopy piece, relatively specialized capsule piece down below. Sticker there on either side. Sticker right here to represent the thrusters for maneuvering. And this holds just two people in there. You got two printed consoles, one on either side. And again, all this stuff here is not intended to be opened up. So. What you see here is really just about what you get. Looks nice, but isn't as much of a toy as it looks like, in my opinion. And then there's this thing, which is a sky crane for low gravity situations. This would be remotely controlled or uh, at least semi-autonomous in its flight. And it just has thrusters at the corners, you know, flies like a, like a quadcopter would. And it's got the the uh, winch up here, so it's able to let down a hook and pick things up, bring those back up. This does use the long string with the stud at either end. So in this part here where the spool is, they got the stud on the spool itself, which is a relatively new piece that they just came out with, I believe it was last year. That's a sticker right there. That's a sticker right there, but it's really nice to not have to tie up the, uh, the string for this at either end. There's another thing you can do with this. Remove the hook from the end right here. That's real easy. And attach this instead. Yeah, this is going to be a lot more fun to play with. Although having a, a hook for a crane is a good thing. But this is pretty nice as well because you just squeeze from either side and all four of the blades, all four of the fingers open up because of the way that they are designed. And that is uh, rubber band uh, tensioned. So you can pick up something such as a large rock on the moon surface and trans transport it back to base. 
And here's an example of a rock that you might pick up. So for the sake of scale, once again, bring in the minifigure. You know, it's decent in size. The rock itself is a brand new piece. It's actually a pair of new pieces. It just took a little bit of a, a micro crater right there. This is molded in an interesting silver color that I've not seen before. It's not the exact same finish as anything that I've seen before because it's mixed together really well. It doesn't have a lot of weld marks and flow marks in it like Lego's regular plastic medium metallic silver does. But you can see that this is dual molded, so that's trans light blue, and you can see the trans light blue base on it. We'll check this out. Open it up. Oh, that is deluxe. So much better than I thought it was going to be. There, the facets of the the inner gems, you know, these are giant geodes, right? And the facets really sparkle a lot more. They capture light. Like this is this is how it actually looks un, under normal conditions. This is not being super enhanced by special studio lighting here. I try to have fairly natural uh, lighting, just just even. And it really does look that good. The top is a separate piece. They're not symmetrical, obviously. You got the anti studs here, but inside you'll also find one of these crystals and then hopefully some signs of alien life is the general idea. Bring that back to the lab for processing. This looks also very good. Mm, not quite as good though. I feel like this looks a little bit better having the silver behind there. But yeah, it's just, it's just a, the silver is just a different. A different finish. It also has a texture on the outside as well, but they, they really mixed the the silver flake in there much better than they've done with most of the molded metallics that they've done in the past. And then this is just a small little bit of built up crater plate, just a handful of pieces for that. It's not the greatest substitute for the classic moon crater base plates from my childhood, not that I had any of those back then, but as an adult, you know, I was able to get some after having looked at them in catalogs as a kid a lot. This is not a substitute. It really doesn't, doesn't do the trick, doesn't do the same thing, but it does provide more play value because you have this and the ability to transport it and uh, open it up too. Here are a few new astronaut figures, all with the same outfits, but with some different accessories to go with them. That's a cool way to do a controller for the remotely operated Sky Crane unit. Like I said, it's not necessarily a drone or autonomous. And this is a massive mega throwback for me to have the metal detector. I love the fact that you can still get those today. I think the mold has been updated once or twice since the early 1970s when those were first introduced. But I love all the, the callbacks to classic space. And kids these days aren't going to care about that, but I care about it. <laughs> I think it's really cool, personally. The packs, the EVA uh, backpacks all have prints on them. That's the same print used throughout. And though the same torsos are used between all of these and leg prints, they have different heads underneath. So these are the three different ones here. And we got some alternate faces as well. There's what the print looks like on the back of that torso. The blue color there, including the dual molding for the arms, is dark azure, a relatively rare, relatively new color for Lego. And there's the full front torso print. I like it. I like it a lot. Then here are the remaining figures with, again, the blue being dark azure. So the, the accent color inside of here that's the darker blue color is just a regular Lego blue. This is a non-EVA style space suit. So this would be like a, a flight suit setup. I mean, look at all these, these different color schemes that they came up with as well. They're, they're compatible, but different. I really appreciate that amount of, of variety, that diversity of appearances, but they all still have that classic space logo tying them together. This is pretty nice stuff. It's also the first time we've gotten this face shield piece, the big large visor compatible with this style of helmet and also a previous design of helmet as well in the dark blue, just opaque dark blue underneath. There's that guy's face, and that's a nice hair piece to get. I hope we get more of this one as well. Looking at these around the back, only one of them has the alternate face. Oh, what do we have here? There were four helmeted figures with two outfits, and they have four alternate hair pieces. Fantastic. A one-to-one -one ratio. Every single one of them is covered. Thank you, Lego. These are leftover pieces. Some nice stuff in there, including the extra printed one-by-one -one there, the dark blue nano fig red color for the small pin is the new style with some some friction in it It actually has friction adding ridges on it so it's not just a recolor and then here's one of the sticker sheets it's the smaller of the two sticker sheets just 
plain white backed. This is the foil, the, uh, the chrome foil backed one that gives us all of the gold stickers for all the solar panels and everything. And now it's that time to answer the question. Is it worth the retail price? Again, $120 US for this. It's 100 euros, 90 pounds UK. And I, you, you've heard this from me plenty of times, but not always. I would like to see it cheaper. I don't feel like this is $120 US worth of stuff here, even in Lego, even by today's standards. When I come across things that I think are good deals, or at least reasonable, reasonable deals, I say so. And uh, I'm, I don't just go around just saying, well, I want it to be cheaper because it sounds cool or something. I really feel that this should be cheaper. And anytime you hear me say that I think that this should be, that a given set should be cheaper, it's based on all of my history, all of my, my purchases in the past, all of my research, uh, comparing Lego to other brands, not just brick-based brands, but just seeing what else we can do with our money today for toys, respecting the design work that went into this, respecting the fact that, that Lego pays their employees decently well and they try to have a good ethical presence, you know, be good stewards and generally be a good company overall, relatively speaking. Taking all that in consideration, I take all that stuff into consideration and I come to a conclusion. And my conclusion here is that this is another case where the set should be priced lower. I would like to see this 100 at the very most. 90 would be great. 89.99, but 100 is where I would like to see this. And I think that it is priced to be put on sale eventually. I think you will eventually, you know, within the next couple of months or so, be able to get this for about $100 from some retailers. If there aren't some retailers already out there that have it at that kind of a discount. The set brought me much joy, much, much joy. I'm still a little bit disappointed in this, given that this is a seven plus set. It's, it's, this stuff is too finicky and, uh, the fact that you can't use this space and can't use parts of this as modules are disappoint disappointing to me. Uh, I think that's that's a, a miss there. Would have been better to leave out some of the detail some of the details to have that interconnectivity with things like this. But these modules and the fact that they still work with the stuff from the previous previous time they did this is great. This isn't the greatest use of space and parts over here, but if you do get the rover set as well, it's really, really nice. And at the very least, it just adds to the mass. This is fantastic. The garage is fine. This is okay. This is good. This works. This is a perfectly good toy. This represents something. Maybe it'll make a kid look it up. Most of the time, not. It's just a few parts. I think that this isn't going to be of that much interest. That much interest. This is absolutely brilliant. I also really like the figures here. So overall, this is a good set. I would just like to see it cheaper. And I think that we will soon. That's it for now. I've got more stuff to build over on Twitch and more reviews to bring you right here. So I'll get to it and talk to you again soon.